So marketing is the action of promoting and selling products or services, or better known as that big pain in the tush that we all must do to further our success and make more money, right? This morning, I wanna take you on an exciting journey, and my hope is by the end of that journey, you are all gonna have a nice warm and fuzzy feeling when you think about using WordPress to market your business. Sounds fun? Okay. Raise your hand if you've ever been on a date. Raise two hands if you've ever been on a good date. Now stand up if you've ever been on a bad date. Finally, scratch your head if you have no idea how dating is like marketing with WordPress. Okay, it really is, and I'm gonna show you. So there are different types of dating strategies, right? We'd all agree on that? There are actually four different kinds with a specific goal. Now, the first type of dating is called dating for fun. And the goal of this dating is enjoyment. This is that no strings attached type of dating, right? We've all done that a few times, some more than others. The second type of dating is called dating to see. Now, the goal of this type of dating is knowledge. This is a bit more intentional. You're spending time with somebody to see if you can spend the rest of your life with them. The third type of dating is dating to decide. Now, the goal of this type of dating is making a yes or no decision about marriage. The old fashioned term for this is courtship. And finally, we have our dating after marriage. Now, this does not mean that you start dating other people after you get married. While that may be a dating strategy, it certainly isn't a smart one, right? The goal of this type of dating is growth. Now that you've decided to spend the rest of your life with somebody, you need to grow and nurture that relationship. So WordPress is a very slick piece of software that can allow you to accomplish a wide variety of goals, right? And just like with dating, WordPress users can be put into a specific type of user. I've actually defined the top three WordPress users, and when I go through this list, I want you to think about which type you are or multiple types, okay? The first type of WordPress user is the WordPress for work user. Now the goal of this user is employment. You see, these users depend on WordPress for their income and their livelihood. Some examples of this user are freelancers, developers, designers, consultants, or any employees of a WordPress-centered business. Now these WordPress users make up almost 27% of all users. Now that's just amazing because almost a third of everybody that uses WordPress depends on it to feed themselves or support their families. Pretty amazing. How many of you are WordPress for work users? Awesome. See, that's, that's more than a third of the room. The second type of user is the WordPress for share user. So the goal of this type of user is sharing. These users set up WordPress in a way to share a particular interest or a niche with a targeted audience. Now, some examples of these users are, you know, blogs, podcasts, uh, video blogs, or any community-centered site. Now, in my opinion, and hopefully shared by most of you in this room, WordPress is the best platform to create engaging, interactive content, right? How many of you are WordPress for share users? Okay. And then finally, and the most important user for this entire talk, is the WordPress for marketing user. Now the goal of this user is to enhance their online visibility and make more money. These users decide on WordPress as their platform of choice to sell and promote their products or services. Now there's a wide variety of users that fall into this type, but the most common are business owners. Now WordPress is a powerhouse platform that has an arsenal of marketing plugins that can help you to promote and sell your products or services. How many of you are WordPress for marketing users? A lot of you raised your hand all three times. That's great. So being successful in dating and being successful in marketing requires you to build a relationship. A relationship is defined 
in the way two or more people, objects, or concepts are connected. And as you know, a relationship, in order to be successful, requires time and sacrifice, right? You all have a relationship with WordPress, whether you know it or not. And my hope is by the end of this talk, that relationship will be stronger and your understanding of using it to market your business will be elevated, okay? So I am happily married and uh, the proud father of five daughters, ranging in age from six-year-old twins all the way up to an 18-year-old college student who loves to rave. Hate it. Uh, I recently was a department manager at Linens and Things. My wife is from York, England. I'm from Buffalo, New York, as you heard in my intro. And we migrated to Southern California in 2000. Now, our closest relative lives about 1,000 miles away in Denver, Colorado. We are pretty much on our own for raising our family. And I can tell you that we've seen some hard times over the years, for sure. Now, my wife has worked her entire adult life until about three years ago when we sat down and we decided that it would be best for her to be a stay-at-home mom because I was doing a horrible job at night of checking homework, preparing dinner, and brushing hair. There's so much hair in my house, it's out of control. <laughs> the sinks are plugged like once a week. But see, this meant that I alone was gonna be fully responsible for all of the financial needs of my family. And this really freaked me out. Now, luckily, I had spent the last eight years sharpening my marketing skills with WordPress, and inside of 18 months, I was able to use WordPress to change my life and the lives of those in this picture. <laughs> Bunch of nutcases. The, do the dog doesn't like us. <laughs> what are you looking at? Who has ever seen the movie The Wizard of Oz? All right. So this movie was released back in 1939 by MGM Studios and is still today considered to be one of the best films in cinema history. Now, for those of you that have not seen The Wizard of Oz, I feel kind of bad for you, but it was a story about a young lady named Dorothy that got whisked away by a tornado to the magical land of Oz. She was then sent on an action-packed journey to find her way back home. Now, when I was a kid, this was by far one of my favorite movies. And I remember enjoying watching it with my family because my mother used to make popcorn on the actual stovetop. Has anybody ever had stovetop popcorn? It's good, huh? So good. I think that was the last time I had it when I was about six years old. Remember this scene? This was the house that Dorothy was in that landed in the Wizard of Oz and crushed and killed the Wicked Witch of the East, or West, excuse me. East. East. She went after the West later. Right. Yes, West, East, East, West. She killed the bad one. This scene used to give me nightmares. Do you remember when they took the ruby slippers off and, and the legs curled up under the house? Ooh, that was scary. So you've decided to start or run a business. Maybe you're an employee of a business in charge of marketing or part of a marketing team. You see, marketing is a very scary task because a lot of it is trial and error and not knowing what will work or what will flop. So I was a district manager of Linens and Things and uh, I was living in Long Beach at the time and my office was 50 miles away in Orange County. Uh, I was responsible for six stores in the Orange County area and my main responsibility was driving sales and customer service goals. Now, during my travels to my stores, I met a department manager named Andre. Andre told me a story about something he created in college. Andre built a web page using Flash that had one million squares on it, one pixel by one pixel in size. And these squares were sold as advertising space. And when you hovered around the page, the ads would expand so you could see the full size of them. Bless you. Andre's goal was to sell 1 million squares at $1 each, equaling $1 million. Very good. Andre was able to sell almost 200,000 squares. And the entire process was automated. This was the first time that I heard the term, make money while you sleep. 
What an exciting concept, right? So I looked at Flash and I thought, man, this is the coolest thing ever. It's gonna be the future of the web. That lasted about six months. <laughs> Lots of tears. I left Flash behind and I started teaching myself HTML and CSS. This is Dorothy at the beginning of her journey in Munchkinland. You see, Dorothy had a goal of following the yellow brick road to find the Wizard of Oz to ask him to take her home. Your business has a goal as well. What is that goal? What's that goal? Yell it out. Make more money. And I'm going to say that a lot because it's important. Marketing is a hard task. We don't do it for nothing. We do it to make more money. So in this movie, the yellow brick road was the path that Dorothy had to stay on in order to reach her goal. You see, Dorothy is your business. And the yellow brick road is WordPress. Remember these three? Yeah. What's their name? The, well, the Lollipop Guild. Lollipop Guild. The, I, the guy in the middle is, was the last surviving munchkin, and he just died a couple years ago, I believe. Yeah, a few, I don't know the exact time, but recently. But he was the last surviving munchkin from the movie. It's not about how you finish, but how you start. That's completely backwards, right? You see, when we're talking about marketing with WordPress, this is exactly how it goes, though. Your website is the entire foundation of this marketing talk. And you need to make sure that that foundation is strong. Now there are three major things that you can do to ensure that your website foundation is strong and ready for some good marketing. The first thing is selecting a stable hosting environment. That's so important. Is your hosting environment safe and fast? The second thing to ensure that your website foundation is strong and ready for some good marketing is to make sure that the content is displayed correctly. If you have spelling or grammar errors on your site, this can cause you to lose business. It's happened to me several times. And the third and final thing, which I believe is the most important in ensuring that your website foundation is strong and ready for some good marketing is education. WordPress changes so fast, right? It's probably changing right now as we're in here. <laughs> yeah, what's the big thing happening right now in WordPress? Gutenberg. Gutenberg. That's like a, that's a bad word in WordPress, isn't it? But things change so fast. I'm really excited about Gutenberg because I've learned about it. I've used it. I've educated myself. And Gutenberg is going to help me market my business better, believe it or not. Education. It's not about how you finish, but how you start. And that start is your website. So in 2006, Linens and Things was purchased by a private equity firm. And they had one goal in mind. They wanted to liquidate all inventory and file bankruptcy. Now, luckily, I had seen the writing on the wall. So I began to think about what I was going to do next in my career. I had been playing around with HTML and CSS for a while, and I thought maybe I could sell websites to small business owners. I gave my notice to linens and things, and then for the next three months, I completely panicked. <laughs> you see, I didn't have the confidence to sell something I just learned how to do. What I learned quickly, though, is that confidence can build rapidly when your rent is past due and you're hiding your car so it doesn't get repossessed. True story. The very first piece of marketing I did for my business was I joined the local chamber of commerce. I thought, that's what businesses do. Join the chamber of commerce and my phone's going to ring off the hook. I got a sticker. <laughs> that's about it. But my phone did ring one day and it was an employee from the chamber of commerce and he was inviting me to a networking lunch. Now, I'd never been to one of these before and I was a bit nervous. I didn't know what to expect. So I asked a friend of mine to come with me like a wingman, right? I had three business cards on me, and I walked into the venue and saw over 100 business owners. <laughs> during the check-in, I was told that at some point during the meeting, I was going to be given 30 seconds to introduce myself and ask these business people for business. I was completely petrified. 
You see, I wasn't scared of public speaking. I was scared to ask a room full of professionals for business. Now, this meeting would set a chain of events in motion that would lead me to you here today. I was given a referral by a mortgage broker to a woman named Susan. And Susan specialized in selling beachfront property. And she was looking to hire a company to advertise that niche online via a website. Susan would become the very first website client I ever had. Remember this guy from the movie? Yep. Who's that? What did he want? He wanted a brain. So how does the scarecrow relate to business and marketing? A lot of times when I ask this, immediately the audience will like yell back at me, wish my customers had more brains. <laughs> and while that may be true in most cases, it certainly is not a marketing strategy that you can rely on. What you can rely on though, is being committed to seeking out the knowledge in your business and then displaying that knowledge on your website with a very clear call to action. Now, there's no such thing as a business with zero competition, right? Competition allows consumers a buying option. Now, don't ever be that business or that person even that says what sets you apart from your competition is excellent customer service. Don't do it. Everybody says that. And to be fair, true customer service cannot be fully verified until the end of the product or service cycle, which happens after you already got the money. But the more brilliant and well-explained business can really set themselves apart online when consumers are looking to buy. Okay, let me give you an example of this, because that was a lot. Let me give you an example. Let's say that you are in the market to buy a premium WordPress plugin. Ever bought a premium WordPress plugin? Cool, support our developers. You're looking for a plugin that can capture email addresses from website visitors. There's lots of those out there, right? An opt-in plugin? You've narrowed it down to two companies. The first company has done an amazing job explaining all the features and benefits of the plugin and has even offered a demo to try before you buy. The second company, you're a little bit impressed, but they haven't done a detailed job of explaining all the ins and outs of what the plugin does. Which company is going to make your purchase muscles tingle more? And if you're wondering where your purchase muscles are, they're right here. Or if you're left-handed, right here. The first one, of course. Model the camera view. Oh, I can't see you guys now. <laughs> one of the worst mistakes that anybody can do in marketing is to overcomplicate it. You see, if you want to be successful in using WordPress to market your business, you must first think like a consumer. You have to put yourself in the driver's seat of the buying process on your site. See how it feels. Uh, back when I was at Linens and Things, we used to do these customer service surveys. And there were two things that customers wanted to see in all of our stores. That they were clean and bright. They didn't care so much about pricing or staff interactions. They simply wanted to shop in a store that was clean and bright. Simple, right? Now, a website's a bit different, but along the same lines. You see, when a consumer is researching or looking for a place to buy online, there's two things that they want to see in a site. Speed and simplicity. Now, let me break that down a bit more. If you're using WordPress to market your products or services, your website is going to fall into one of two call to actions. <laughs> you are either using the site to make payments directly online or you're using your website to build credibility for a sale offline, okay? Now let me give you an example of each. First one's easy. Your website's used to collect payments online. People pay online and get their product or service. The second one where a website is used to build credibility for an offline sale would be let's say an attorney, a doctor, 
a real estate agent, mortgage broker. These, these payments for their services are not collected online, but their website is pivotal to creating credibility so people buy from them, right? Now in either situation, the visitor to these sites want to find what they're looking for and do something with it as fast as possible. Imagine yourself in your living room looking for the remote control. What do you do when you find it? Start pressing buttons, right? So what I'm about to say next is probably the most valuable part of this entire marketing talk. So I really want everybody to pay attention and I'll say it three times more if you need it. Ready? Make a note to figure out what it is you want your website visitors to find and once they find it, what do you want them to do with it? And once you have that figured out, just make that process as easy as possible. That's it. It's really that simple. Do I need to repeat it? Yes, Make a note to figure out what it is you want your website visitors to find. And once they find it, what you want them to do with it and make that process as easy as possible. Figuring out that process might take some time, might take some research, you might have to interview some of your customers. But once you figure that process out, just make it as easy as possible. So the, the Beatles, any Beatles fans in here? Gotta be more than that, the Beatles. The Beatles released the song Love Is All You Need in 1969. And it was performed on the first ever global television show, which had over 400 million viewers. And it's true, right? All you need is love. This is why the poor Tin Man was sad all the time and crying. He had no heart to love. Now you see, as business owners and business professionals, we are always on the hunt for love and those that adore what we have to offer, right? We love when people say they love our service, or they adore what we do. And you see, online reviews are such a massive part of a business's credibility. And those reviews exist whether you know it or not. <laughs> They're out there. So why is love so important in our business? Well, love creates credibility and credibility generates conversions and conversions equal money, right? There are several simple ways that you can encourage love on your site. Simple things like blog comments, social media integration into all of your content. What about review boxes? What about guest posts from other authors? So going back to dating for a moment, reviews are kind of like dates. There's good dates and there's bad dates, right? It's a lot easier to get a bad date. Would we all agree? You see, in most cases, getting a positive review from somebody requires them to have an over the moon experience. But a negative review can be triggered by something as little as a misspelling on your website. Not fair, right? You see, people are drawn to the online review system when something negative happens because they want justice for how they feel. Those types of reviews happen all by themselves. <laughs> you do not have to promote those. But positive reviews require a bit more incentive and be proactive in gathering them. There are many tools out there that you can incorporate into your WordPress site to gather positive reviews. Now, when you're doing your research on these tools, make sure you focus on the tools that allow you to capture them on your site, but spread elsewhere on the web, okay? You don't wanna hoard the love, you wanna share it. <clears throat> oh, poor lion. Probably the saddest character for me. He tried so hard to be brave, but he was scared of his own shadow, right? He lacked what he desired most, courage. 
There's nothing to fear but fear itself. Is this true or false? It's absolutely false. We're talking about marketing a business. Everything's scary. It's kind of true, but not in marketing. Everything's scary in marketing, not just fear. Everything's scary. Just the word, saying the word's scary. You must be fearless in your marketing attempts. Let me say that again. You must be fearless in your marketing attempts. Don't be afraid to try something new that you believe will make more money. Has anybody ever heard of A-B testing? Cool, cool. So those of you that have not heard about A-B testing, it is a very slick marketing technique that allows you to take two versions of the same web page and see which one performs better. And once you have that data, you can make sure that you're displaying the content that converts best. Very, very powerful. There are several plugins out there that will allow you to incorporate A-B testing on your site. A second very simple yet powerful marketing technique is something I like to call the popular kids method. Anybody ever heard that? No, because I just made it up a couple days ago. So are we all using Google Analytics or some form of traffic reporting tool? Okay. Those of you that are not, make sure you make a note of that to get that in your site before the end of today. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna dive into your traffic reports and you're gonna figure out your most traveled and visited URLs or your popular kids. And once you have this information, you're gonna look at those URLs and you're gonna come up with a strategy for a very clear call to action. Remember, what do you want them to find and once they find it, what do you want them to do with it? Because these are the URLs that your visitors are seeing the most. We're gonna, we're gonna do questions at the end. These are the URLs that are in front of people more than anything else on your site. Take advantage of that. Use your popular kids to drive conversions. You have to be fearless in your marketing attempts. I was talking to a gentleman before the presentation today that marketing is a lot like gambling. When you hit, feels good. When you don't hit, feels bad, right? Because in most cases it costs you money. But you can hit a jackpot in marketing. But you have to be fearless. Don't be afraid to try new things. So the only way that you can truly harness the power of marketing with WordPress is by experimenting with it. Don't be afraid. And actually the more mistakes you make, the faster you're gonna learn, right? That goes with anything. I literally started 12 years ago with zero WordPress experience and through self-learning and a lot of mistakes, I was able to teach myself enough to support my large family. Now let me say that another way. Without the things I learned and the mistakes I made over the last 12 years, I would not be able to feed my family. Now that's really humbling to me because never did I think I could do all this until I started to do all this. So at some point in the next week, think of something that has kind of freaked you out about marketing and dive into it, at least learn more about it because knowledge is not a well-trained dog. The things that you want will not come to you if you call on them. You have to go out and get them and then absorb them. So the, Dorothy made her journey down the yellow brick road to Emerald City, where the Wizard of Oz was. And she was sent in to see him and asked very nicely, can you please help me get home? And what did he do? He yelled at her and he sent her away. You see, Toto was the little, I think it was a, what kind of dog was it? A little, a little rat dog, that's what she said. Toto, Toto was upset with the wizard yelling at Dorothy and jumped out of Dorothy's arms and noticed a curtain on stage from where the yelling was coming from and pulled back the curtain to find that it was not a magical wizard at all. It was just a man behind the curtain, right? That's where the saying comes from. 
Now, when it comes to marketing, there is no magical wizard or single solution to all of our marketing needs. Instead, we must be committed to using the resources around us to help us be better marketers, right? I wanna introduce you to a term called TLC. And this stands for technology life cycle. This is the lifespan of any new technology. And that lifespan is six to nine months. What that means is any new technology created today will be on the decline in six to nine months because it's either been updated or made obsolete. Now WordPress is a piece of software, hence it is technology and is no different. And six to nine months is actually huge for WordPress, gosh, six to nine hours maybe. I guarantee that if you have not logged into your website in the past two days, the next time you do, there's gonna be some updates pending, <laughs> right? This is a good thing because it's always changing and getting better, but you need to make sure that you educate yourself. And if you're at WordCamp, you're already doing that. These changes happen quickly. If you're not involved in Gutenberg, get involved in it now. Don't wait for it to come out. And there's nothing to panic about with Gutenberg. Oh, fun fact with this t-shirt, uh, this sold over $22 million in sales and royalty, beating the pet rock. Remember the I'm with stupid t-shirt? $22 million, it's crazy. So w when I was a kid, I really enjoyed going to McDonald's, right? What kid does it? When I was nine years old, I learned about something called Hamburger University. Hamburger University was created in the basement of a McDonald's in 1961 in Illinois. And this is the premier training and leadership development center for McDonald's employees. Man, I was so excited. I thought when I was of age, I was gonna go to Hamburger University, I was gonna graduate from Hamburger University, and I was gonna be a McDonald's manager. <laughs> it's actually pretty funny, because we, we used to do these exercises in elementary school where you had to talk about or draw what you wanted to be when you grew up, right? So I always used to draw a big cheeseburger with a door in it and me walking through the door. It's a true story. Now, I never made it to Hamburger University, but I did see the documentary Supersize Me three times. And that's all I needed to know about McDonald's. <laughs> I, I, to be honest though, I still do love Chicken McNuggets. I'm, I'm sorry. But you see, while McDonald's has a very targeted and clear training program for its employees, there really is no such thing that exists for marketing a product or service, right? Yeah, you can go to college and you can learn the surface area of marketing, but then you get out in the real world and try to sell something, and a lot of that theory doesn't work, right? So I'm gonna t I, I've talked a lot about education, and that's the best thing that you can do when it comes to marketing. You have to use the resources around you. What are some great marketing resources that you guys can just yell out that others can take advantage of? You, you were about to say it. Facebook. Facebook, Facebook groups, yep. Podcasts. Podcasts, any specific? Uh, Amy Porterfield. Amy Porterfield. HubSpot Marketing. HubSpot's, Hub, their HubSpot's blog. LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Twitter. Twitter? You said Twitter? That no. One. Instagram. User groups, Redis, Redis. Meetup, WordCamp. Yes. WordPress TV. Yes. <sighs> so. WordPress TV. Yes. Yeah. Tweet it. So Dorothy had made her journey down the yellow brick road, but before she reached the Emerald City, she was constantly harassed and pestered by, is she east or west? East? West. Because I'm east coast, that's why. 
She was constantly pestered by the Wicked Witch of the West. This was the sister of the witch that Dorothy killed in Munchkinland, right? She was upset. She wanted to kill Dorothy and take the ruby slippers to enhance her evil power. So in marketing, we all have a bunch of witches. And I said witches, not the other word. But there are actually two main things that hold us back from successful marketing. It is the lack of drive and the lack of patience. I would like to help cure that a bit today. I want to give you two mindsets that will completely change the way you embrace marketing. These things are so simple, yet so powerful, if you implement them into your thought process. You ready for them? The first thing you must always do and never forget when it comes to marketing is walk before you run. Now, th this sounds really cliche, but I can't tell you how many business owners I've met over the years that have never marketed a product or service, and the first thing that they wanna do is just dump a whole bunch of money into online advertising. Now, while at first this may seem attractive and a quick fix, but it probably will yield little or no return. The better approach is to spend some time researching some marketing techniques that cost little or no money, but have long-term benefits and more importantly, long-term online exposure. What are some of the marketing tasks that cost nothing but give you long-term online exposure? SEO. SEO can cost. I mean, if you do it yourself, it's free, but... Webinars. Webinars. Podcasts. Podcasts. Blogs. So there, there's, there's kind of a theme there, right? Webinars, podcasts, blogs. What, what is all that stuff? Content. content. Yeah, content. And more importantly, online content, because once you put it online, it's always online, right? Until you take it off. As long as you have a good host. That's, that's, <laughs> that's number one, right? Stable hosting environment. You ready for the second one? The second thing you must always do and never forget when it comes to marketing is do not be lazy. You see, successful marketing is all about consistency. I'm a hockey player, and a couple years ago, I, I got hurt. I hurt my back playing. And prior to this injury, I had not been to the doctor in 15 years. Just, just didn't need to go. Healthy as a horse, right? But I got hurt, and I did the whole urgent care thing. And that was great, because they, they would dope me up something nice <laughs> every time. But I needed to see a specialist to fully diagnose my back pain. So during the examination, I was told a big part of the reason I got injured is because I was 30 pounds overweight. I was like, great, I'm in pain and I'm fat. So the quickest way that I thought to lose weight was I'm gonna cut beer out of my diet. Within a couple weeks, I had lost eight pounds and within three weeks, I was back to enjoying beer. <laughs> I had gained back the four pounds of the eight that I lost because I wasn't consistent and I was lazy. You see, marketing can change so quickly. And what works today may not work tomorrow, right? What exists today may be obsolete tomorrow. Something new might be there. You cannot be lazy in educating yourself and staying on top of your marketing goals and your techniques. I want to share with you a big juicy goal of mine. I would love to write a book called Motion Creates Motion. And the entire concept of this book would be when you're uncertain of what to do, just do something and it will all work out. And this concept of Motion Creates Motion has really gotten me through some dark times in my professional career. Now, if you're at a point in your marketing efforts where you are feeling frustrated or defeated, you must do something. Create some type of focused motion 
no matter how simple it may seem. So back in uh, December of 2016, my business was having the worst month in history. And I was in a complete panic. I didn't have any more money to dump into marketing or any online advertising, but I had to do something. I decided that we would give away service to 100 people that have never used us before. Now, the average annual spend of a customer in our company is $240. So by the end of 2017, we had banked an additional 24,000 based on those 100 people we initially gave free service to. You see, motion creates motion. When you're uncertain of what to do, just do something and it will all work out. It really does. All right. There are two things that would really make me happy if you guys walk away from this talk today. Two thoughts. The first thought is being proud of yourself that you've decided to come to WordCamp this weekend instead of doing whatever it is you normally do on the weekend, which I'm sure has nothing to do with marketing for most of you. And the second thought is taking pride in the fact that you've learned something new about using WordPress to market your business. And regardless of what level of marketer you are in this room, think of some new actions that you can take on your site over the next few days. And when you find actions in, when you find success in those actions, remember the moment it happens. So you can do it again and again and again. You see, WordPress has long lost its title of just being a blogging platform, right? WordPress is a powerhouse, robust piece of software that can lead you down the yellow brick road to make more money. I think we got five minutes for questions. Yeah, some of the most popular pages on my website I sell health insurance or some off-the-wall tangent that maybe I looked up for a hobby or personal interest. But those are the pages that might get the most business and I haven't really been able to get a, think of well, what do I sell on that site because it's health insurance related. So the question is, you're, you have a health insurance website and the, uh, the pages that are being most visited are not necessarily relevant to what you want them to see? Is that? They're not relevant at all. They help so, uh, so you have a website where you're creating credibility for an offline sale, right? Are people buying directly on the site? No, no, I mostly want people to buy online. Oh, so they're buying on the site. The insurance company's website and they can just go there and fill in late. So there's two things you can do. You can, you can figure out why those are your most popular pages. Mm -hmm. And if they're not relevant, work on some other pages to be popular. Or you can take advantage of those being the most popular and adjust the content to content that converts. Mm -hmm. Right? Because people are seeing it more than any other pages on your site. Take advantage of that traffic and adjust the content so you can drive conversions. Maybe an opt-in, maybe a simple opt-in box that pops up. You know, something. Is that the answer? Yeah, and also in the time, between the time that you said I had to wait until now, I thought of something to make it relevant. Cool, that's awesome. Yeah. How did you convert 103 new clients into 24 So the average spend of a customer, annual spend, is $240. So we, we sell support. So when things break on a site, they buy a support ticket to fix it. So that's, that's their average annual spend. So, th so initially we gave 100 people free service to get them into the system, yeah. right? Because there's a whole bunch of marketing that happens behind the scenes to these new people, right? That gets them to buy. Yeah. So we gave them free service to get them in. And then the average annual spend of those 100 people was $240. Uh, I, I can give you a summary. It's it's pretty simple. It's it's automated emails from Mailchimp. Oh. It's really simple, or or abandoned cart emails. But it's it's an automated system that once they're in, you know, they get constantly touched all the time 
to buy and we're here, we can help. And that's, that's a really good marketing technique too. Set up your automation and then just let it do its work. Any other questions? One more? It's interesting. I didn't start on WordPress. Um, there was a company called Homestead, and they had a software called Site Builder. Um, they, they were eventually bought by QuickBooks, actually. But I used their Site Builder software to build websites, and I had a, a client that uh, built his own blog in WordPress. And I went to WordPress.com. I was like, how'd you do all that stuff with WordPress.com? And he told me about WordPress.org. And then, you know, once, once I got in, I never went back. But I didn't originally start with WordPress. No, just HTML and CSS. Any other questions? That's it. Thank you, everybody. Woo!